When using view to render out a list of items based on an array, we can use a directive called v4. Now the concept of a v4 loop is quite simple and if you work with view, you're probably already quite familiar with them. So within this video, I'm going to share with you eight tips that can help you start writing better v4 loops that align with view's best practices. So let's get started. First off, let's take a look at a v4 loop. So what these allow us to do is make our code more dynamic. So within this example, we're rendering out an unordered list with some li tags, and if we wanted to define any more li items in the future, then we would statically have to come into our template here and add those to our unordered list. Now, to make this more dynamic, we can use a v4 loop. To start, we just want to create an array, and then we want to grab the values of our list items and add it to that array. Then we could use a v4 directive on our li tag and we could iterate through that array and render out a list item for each value that we have inside of that array. And as you can see, we have the same exact result here inside of our browser as we did when we statically assigned each one of the li tags inside of our unordered list. And if we want to add any additional items to our list, then all we need to do is add a value to our array here and then that item will be rendered inside of that list dynamically. Now that we have an understanding of how a v4 loop works, let's jump into the tips. So this first tip is a very common best practice and that is you should always be using a key attribute with your v4 loops. The view documentation recommends whenever possible that we add a key to our v4 loop. Now, the reason why it's so important to add this is because this is how view is going to keep track of that particular element within that list that we're iterating through. And it's gonna give us more control on how the DOM is going to be manipulated. Now the key that you define should also be unique. So it's a very common practice to add something like an ID for that key attribute. So you might be wondering what happens if I actually don't define a key within my loop? Well, first off, if you have the ESLint plugin for view install within your application, then you've probably been prompted with this wonderful message right here saying that it's required to have a key attribute defined within your v4 loop. If you choose to ignore that, then what's going to happen is view is going to attempt to make the DOM as efficient as possible using what they call an in-place patch strategy, which could lead to some undesired or head scratching behavior. For the second tip, you might commonly associate a v4 loop to iterating through an array, but you can also actually iterate through an object to list out all of that object's properties. So let's take a look at this by creating a new object and then within our template, we'll define a new unordered list. And then within there, we'll have a li tag and then we'll create a v4 directive that's going to loop through our object. And then we want to define a key here, which is going to be our value. And then inside of our li tag, we're just going to output the value of each property that we have within our object. Then here inside of the browser, as you can see, we have all the values of our properties listed. In addition to outputting the value of each property that we have within our object, we can also output the property name itself by defining a second value here called key, and then we can just output key here to get a hold of that property name. And now here inside of our browser, not only do we have the value of each property that we're iterating through, but we also have the name of that property. So before we dive into the next tip, if you are enjoying this video, be sure to scroll down and leave a like on it down below, as this really does help out the channel. The third tip is we can also use v4 with the range. So instead of passing in an array or an object, we can pass in a number and then the template is going to repeat as many times as the number you defined. Now a great use case for this is if you wanted to do some sort of pagination. So let's create an array of people and then to keep track of the current page, we'll create a variable here. And on our li tag, we'll define a v4 directive and we'll pass i as the parameter. And then we want to show 10 people per page. So we'll pass in the value of 10. And we'll also assign a key here that is equal to our parameter of i. Then inside of our li tag, we'll define the current people. So we'll define people and then inside of our square brackets here, we'll multiply the current page times 10 since we want to show 10 per page. And then we'll add on the i parameter. And this will give us a reference to each person we should be showing. So for the fourth tip, we can also use a v4 directive on a template tag. Now, so far we've only used the v4 directive on a single element. If we wanted to render out a block of elements, we can use the template tag with a v4 directive to do so. The fifth tip is that you should never use a v4 directive and a vif directive on the same element. The reason why you don't want to do this is because when the two exist on the same element, the vif directive has a higher priority than the v4 directive. And simply put, that means that you're going to run into some issues. So in this example, we're going to iterate over an array of people and we only want to show that specific person if they're over the age of 24. 
Now, because V if has a higher priority than the V4, it's going to try to do the comparison before the loop has finished, which is going to result in an error. Now we can fix this simply by just wrapping our li tag inside of a template tag and then having our V4 directive live on there. And then within our li tag, we can still do our V if directive, which is only going to show if the age is greater than 24. For tip number six, use a computer property for displaying filtered data. So in the previous tip, we looked at how we could use a v4 and vif directive together to iterate through a list of data and then only output data based on a certain condition. Although what we did was perfectly fine in the eyes of the view documentation, I usually don't use a v4 and vif directive together in that manner to filter out data. I would mainly use those two directives to determine whether or not I should display that list or not, not to actually filter out the data itself. So to filter out our data, we can create a new computer property called filter people, which is going to return all the people inside of our array that have an age greater than 24. And now on our v4 loop, instead of iterating through our people array and then using a vif directive to determine if the age is greater than 24, we can just simply use our computed value of filtered people. For tip number seven, in addition to accessing the array or object's values, we can also access what they call the index or the position of each item inside of our v4 loop. So how we access this is very simple. Now all we want to do is wrap our initial parameter inside of parentheses, then we'll pass a comma and then we can define a second parameter called index. And you can use the index for a variety of different things. So you can use it for pagination, you can use it to display the index of the current item. And sometimes I even use it to get reference to a specific item that perhaps is going to be updated from within that loop. So for the eighth and final tip, you should avoid using the index for your key attribute. Now, as you know, if you don't define a key attribute within your v4 loop, you'll probably end up getting an ESLint error. So a very common solution that I see many people doing, even myself, is an easy way to get around that is to add the index to your v4 loop and then use that for your key attribute. Now, sometimes this is perfectly okay to do in the scenario that the list that you're going to be iterating through is simple, meaning that you're not going to be doing any manipulation to it. Now, if you are, then you definitely don't want to use the index for your key attribute as you may see some undesired behavior and you may want to use a package like UID or you can even create your own unique ID by using some of the math methods. Now to demonstrate the issue with this, I have an unordered list and within that unordered list, we have this people component and we're going to create a component for each person that we have inside of an array called people info. And to start, we're also going to define a index value here and set our key to our index. And we're also going to define a prop called name and set that equal to the name dot name. Now here inside of our component, we first off are going to define our props here. So we have our name and then we're also going to create a local value of this prop and we're going to set that to local name and then we're going to set it inside of the on mounted lifecycle hook. And then inside of our template, we're just going to output the prop and also the local data. Then back here inside of our initial component, we have this button which is going to add a person, but not only is it going to add a person, it's going to do what we call a splice into the second position of this array. So it's going to add it into the middle. And here inside of the browser, this is what it looks like. So if we click on this button to add a person, you can see that it adds this new value into our array. But as you can see, the prop and the local data is now all messed up. And that's because we're currently using the index as our key attribute. Now, the reason why this happens is because when view patches the DOM with the new item, all the data local inside of that iterated component is not going to update. And that's because we're using the index as our key attribute. Now, if we use a unique ID such as an ID, then this won't happen. So instead of using the index value as our key attribute, let's use the ID instead. Then back here inside of our browser, if we click on the button now, you'll see that we no longer have that weird discrepancy between the prop and then the local data. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the video here. Hopefully you did learn something new and you can start applying some of these tips into your view applications. And if you have any more tips or best practices that you want me to cover, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.